Welcome. You look exhausted, traumatized even. Sit. You must not know why you're here. Let me make it very clear. Punishment. But fear not. The gravity depends on your acts and deeds. Most people, most by far, end up in this afterlife. Hell is just what you mortals choose to call it. Everybody must face punishment for their deeds to keep a balance. But I assure you, it's less of an eternal condemnation and more of a chance to absolve yourself. Absolve yourself of your sins. To start again. For some, that's a year of work and growth. For others, it's hundreds to let the depth of their punishment sink in. Oh, they all say that. Hell sounds scary, sure, but only the prettiest little princesses go to heaven. If you think you are good, then your punishment might not be so bad after all. Surely you should have nothing to fear then. Hmm. But somebody decided you belong with me. So you must have done something to anger a spirit or two. Just the fewest are perfect enough for an audience with the busy man above. But everybody meets me. You must have seen some horrible things coming here. Souls of the damned clawing it away to the surface. But this is not your fate. I can spoil you of this much. Your soul gives an unthreatening aura. Be you pure or not, we will find a more suitable punishment for you here in hell. It's a wonder, really, how you almost made it, from what I can tell. Pure of heart, are you not? Sit still. Your scent. Free of burden, unstained, innocent. No, this can't. The spirits don't make mistakes. I should cast you with the liars and manipulators for tricking me with such an innocent facade, but how would you mask such a scent? You are mortal. Give me your hands. Place them in mine. Close your eyes. In a moment, I'll place my claws on your wrists and slowly apply just enough pressure for it to strain at the surface of your skin. When I pierce the surface, 
You might hear some things, feel some ways, ignore it. Just keep focusing on my voice, my words, my guidance, my voice, my words, my guidance, my voice, my words, my guidance, your name, what is it? Where are you from? Hmm. You need not answer out loud. And what is the last thing you remember? Good. So we are ready then. If you ever lose focus, guide yourself back to me and my voice and my words and my guidance. I sense chaos not in you but around you like you wear it. Do things usually happen outside of your power? Things you could not prevent but had to witness? Mm. Has it brought you grief? That would pain me. I'll make your stay here not as bad. And what is your strongest emotion in this very moment? Stay focused, my voice, my words, my guidance, please. I need you to do something for me as a part of this test. With your eyes still closed, imagine a simple circle, like a little reticle in the middle of your vision. A matted, bluish, purplish, greenish dot like when you've stared at a bright light and closed your eyes. The shape is simple, but ever-changing, which makes it complex. It's melding and colors that seem to slowly appear against the darkness of your eyelids, then vanish before they ever gain your attention. In a way, what you're staring at could be described as an emptiness, a vast void filled with fragments of color. However, I, I think of it as a canvas. A canvas not for painting, but for little ideas, images, as well as emotions, thoughts, recollections. And when I say something, when I tell you to imagine, it's like it enters your mind. It appears in the void on your canvas, manifesting like dreams. Dreams that, for once, aren't created in your own solitude, but from another presence, from me. Imagine, if you will, that this presence manifested itself as a hound, a curious and friendly creature, purely motivated by 
discovering and inspecting the various emotions floating around in your head. It scouts your mind, trotting about happily, following whatever figurative scent or emotions call to it the most. Some claws tapping on wooden flooring as it uses them for friction on the smooth surface on your mind. You can feel it moving around. It presses its curious snout against shelves lined with books. The books have no title, but instead display dates, locations, or people. Like your memories were neatly arranged on a seemingly endless bookshelf. The hound sniffs along the books. Some are not to the ground, some are misplaced. The order is unimportant to the creature. It doesn't care what happened first, last, or in between. It only needs to understand what's going on in your mind right now and what plays a part in it. The hound is trying to understand you. It's learning who you are. Its understanding grows deeper with every scent, every memory, every emotion, and every opinion it catches. But it needs more than a random collection of memories, or the neatly packaged, perhaps chaotically arranged room that is your mind. So that very room starts to change. Walls that may have manifested are replaced with trees. The shelves and books are bushes and leaves, and the doorways become a collection of dirt paths. The hound, curious as it is, starts trotting down this path, down the new lanes of emotions, of thoughts, of personality, always with its curiously hovering snout just above ground. It follows them deeper into the forest that we have painted in your mind. The paths narrow and the trees grow denser as layers upon layers of emotions manifest themselves to protect what could only be considered the core of your mind. We are very close to our destination. The hound knows it. You hear it, distant, but approaching, the steps grow louder, the sniffing becomes more audible. At the end of the hound's path is you. Upon reaching you, the hound speaks. I am the hound, just as I am the painter, the anchor and the guide. It is my duty to find you, to discover what you are, and to determine your fate. Your paths are both narrow and wide, separate yet interconnected. It's as though you haven't really decided what you are, or what you need to be. You have people that need you, even ones that don't yet know that they may come to love you. On the other hand, you have adversaries, difficulties, hurdles awaiting you points of growth that 
you haven't had the chance to live yet. Your life, your experiences and influences aren't over. There is more for you to behold in the land of the living. I have upheld my duty and you are ready to return. You're a curious person, you know. I sense no need to judge you, and yet I have. Nothing ill will come upon you here. Nothing has been decided for you. Your destiny is full of potential. For good, for bad. It is not my duty to change this, but I will bless your journey the best the devil might. You may sleep here, and when you wake, you shall return to your world. You don't belong here. It felt different when you arrived. I knew you were pure scented, innocent facade, but this, there is no mistake. A test for me, perhaps. A trial of honesty and deciding fates sent to me by the angels. But I doubt it. Regardless, you are not done in your world. And I would feel no better keeping you here. But you may rest here until you are ready to return.